Hello my friends, I'm gonna try to do something. If I post a video with my reaction comments, um, the view, they're gonna send straight away a copyright um, a notification and uh, the video will not go through. I will try to post uh, an image with Jonathan from that time when he went, uh, you know, he visited the view. <laughs> That's the most toxic show ever, but uh, I took a look, quick look at the page uh, where the interview has been posted on YouTube. Um, and it has uh, over 8,000, 8,010 views. 800,000, sorry, 800,000, 810,000 to be more precise, 810,000 views. So, um, I was a little bit shy of 1 million views, which I think it's excellent. So, I'm exploring now with you. Let's see if I can do this. Just uh, a still, but uh, the sound, uh, all, all of it, all what happened there in the view when Jonathan visited it will be the sounds just a still image with Jonathan smiling from the view um, let's try and do it this way let's see if it works so three two one go I am a huge fan of the series The Chosen which shows the humanity of Jesus in a way we haven't seen before and highlights him and the Apostles in a different way What's really revolutionary is the way he wanted everybody to be invited to the table. Take a look. Your obsession with what is clean and unclean goes farther than God intended and does no good for anybody but yourself. We tithe everything so the poor can benefit. Down to the smallest plants grown in our gardens. And to that I say woe to you Pharisees. You tithe mint and dill and cumin, measuring carefully the last speck while neglecting what is actually important of the law. Justice and mercy and faithfulness. You blind guides straining out an act while swallowing a camel. Look at these people. What have you done to help them? Please welcome Jonathan Rumi. guys. Wow. I feel like I should bless myself. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like doing this. I've got some water here. <laughs> He's got I some water. I can help the water if you want. i got some water right here. We were just saying, at least you're not a blonde, blue-eyed Jesus, <laughs> finally. Yeah. 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 I think we've gone a little more authentic to uh, who Jesus might have actually been. Jewish. Like. Yeah. 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 That does help. That does yeah. help. So the show, The Chosen, is a historical drama based on the life of Jesus. The first three seasons had more than 600 million wow. views. Yeah. And yes, and was the most crowdfunded TV series ever. Clearly, you're reaching people. Yeah. You play Jesus. You? Um. <laughs> <laughs> So is, are you finding that people are having a little bit of trouble in separating you from the part? I, I, I already did. did. I already did. <laughs> yeah, just yes, the but, but, yes, but it's a whole different question for him yeah. because on a daily basis, right, yeah. people, people are responding. So I'm, I'm just curious. Occasionally the line, the line seems a little blurred. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I try to gently just remind people that my name is Jonathan and, and <laughs> not you actually you Jesus. You can't hear their confession uh, or anything. I've had people try. <laughs> I'm like, nope, nope, save it for the priest. That's, well, Jonathan, you the had professional. fun with that. <laughs> <laughs> then I got to answer for it later, so. True. <laughs> True. We'll yes. have to atone. But it's easy to see why viewers have taken to you as mm. this role, Jesus. It seems like a pinnacle role. We've also seen you in episodes of hit shows like The Good Wife, The Mindy Project. Um, and this is a fun fact. You used to do voiceover for MTV's Celebrity Deathmatch. Okay. I did, yeah. Very similar yes. uh, to Jesus. But those jobs uh, weren't actually paying the bills. So you considered at some point um, kind of giving up on this. How did you decide to stay the course? 
Well, I, you know, I worked here in New York City after college uh, in production. I was a location <coughs> scout, and that was how I made a, a decent living. Uh, but I had started working. Uh, MTV Celebrity Deathmatch was the first acting job I ever had. So uh, from that point, I always had a, a curiosity about, like, well, I wonder what this would look like if it went further. And fast forward to the housing market collapsing mm. in 2008. I had booked a few other jobs. I started booking television, and I thought, okay, well, this is an opportunity to see if I can actually make this work. So I moved to L.A., and mm. for eight years, uh, I didn't have the safety of the job that I left in New York. It's a different, different uh, unions and all sorts of uh, complications to do the same thing in L.A., but that's not what I was going to L.A. for. So I had to do all these other jobs, these side jobs. I drove rideshare. I, I uh, worked in catering, all these yeah. things that I'd never done before. And gotten to the point where I was broke, I was out of money, I was out of food, I was out of even government assistance for food. Mm. And the only thing I hadn't done at that point was the thing that was left to do, which was to get on my knees and surrender my entire life yeah. and my career. <laughs> and everything that I had up to that point over to God because there wasn't anything I realized I could do on my own. Were you a believer before that? Yeah, oh. yeah, I was raised with the faith from a child, but it really wasn't until after that moment, um, it was about almost six years ago now, where I just said, Jesus, I surrender myself to you, take care of everything, and that day I received this incomprehensible financial miracle that changed my life, and then three months later I booked The Chosen. Um, wow. wow. huge fans of The Chosen. And it's so interesting because this story's been told so many times. There have been so many different renderings. But this one, it, it plays like a, you know, a drama. There's sex, there's humor, there's, there's violence. It has kind of everything you would want, but you stay very true to the original scripture. Why do you think so many people, I mean, 600 million views hmm. have tuned in? Why does this resonate with so many people? I think, you know, because of how we really take great pains to make these characters that most people know just from a few lines of scripture or they, they see them in stained glass windows or in statues. Uh, we, we take them off of those pedestals and make them relatable real life people with marital problems, with mm -hmm. you know issues of, of childbirth and the things that we go through today, the issues that we go through today. So by seeing um, essentially ourselves in these characters, like any great TV show, you start to identify. And yeah. then the fact that it's this story, that it's the greatest story ever told, now brings it to a whole other level. Yeah. And they're like, oh, I can relate to Jesus in a way that I never thought I could before. It, it really is relatable. Uh, one of our crew, Zach, came to me months ago and said, I'm Catholic. Mm. You got to watch this show about <laughs> Jesus. I was like, I know a lot about Jesus. And I don't, obviously. Um, I think but there's always more to learn. There's always more to learn. And, yeah. and, and what that's, you're so profound. I, I think what was fascinating to me is growing up, I always saw the blonde hair, blue eyed Jesus. Mm. Yeah. Right? And now I go to a black Catholic church and Jesus is, is brown. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I think you, it seems that you took such great pains to do that in, in this and to portray him as he probably likely was since this was the Middle East, yeah. right? Most people don't know that. Yeah. And he's also Jewish. Mm -hmm. um, so the show explores that uh, the way Judaism is woven into the story in such a beautiful way. Your cast is extremely diverse. Was that important to you and to your director, Dallas Jenkins, mm -hmm. when this was coming together? Was that intentional? Yeah, absolutely. So, so Dallas is the creator of the show. We have two other writers in addition to Dallas, and they wanted to, to bring to the screen the most authentic portrayal of Jesus and his disciples in this story mm -hmm. and its roots and its Jewishness and the diversity of the people and the colors and everybody that would have lived in these next to these seafaring towns. They were port cities. Yeah. So you had people from all walks of life, right. all, co all colors, uh, all shades that came through this, this, this place. Yeah. And so it only felt right to just depict what would have been truly authentic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do I have time to ask yeah. this question? Yeah. So <clears throat> in the clip that we saw earlier, which shows Jesus speaking up for marginalized people, yeah. the poor, etc., uh, which is the Jesus that we love, mm. um, not everyone interprets that message the same way these days. Religion in this country even seems weaponized at times. Mm -hmm. uh, as a man of deep faith, which you obviously are, does that frustrate you at all? You know, in, in that clip, we see Jesus basically taking to task the Pharisees that have essentially 
perverted the law or, or, or taken the faith and made it about the, the specificity in the letters of the law versus the heart of the law versus the, the community. You know, it was, they were taking great pains to follow the law at the expense of the followers. Mm -hmm. And there was injustice in that. And, you know, anytime you see injustice taking place, um, Jesus is not going to be happy about that. And so I think, I think the fact that we, we see him speaking his mind about it, I think uh, he gave us a really tough example to follow, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So listen, I want to tell people that uh, there's a documentary out also called Jonathan and Jesus, uh, and you can, it's on Amazon. We want to thank Jonathan. Season four of The Chosen premieres in theaters on Thursday, February 1st, before it hits streaming platforms.